Welcome, this is Tennessee End of Course Practice Test for Algebra 1, Practice Test number 3, question number 54. Now, this question is a multiplication question, essentially you can see that the 5x uh, y to the second power is on the outside, so we're just going to distribute it onto the inside. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it in a, you know, reasonably, a reasonable way, like on paper, and then from there I'll show you a way that if you have no idea what's going on right here, you could still potentially get the answer. I'm not very proud of the second method, but it does exist, so I might as well show it to you. Anyway, what I'm going to do is distribute. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to put a 1 on any variable that doesn't have 1. Or, yeah, any variable that doesn't show the exponent of, to the first power. Because it's assumed to be there, you don't need to write it. But sometimes it's easy to lose things like that in the middle of the process, so there it is. Now, I'm going to do the order of operations very quickly, just so I can make a point about something. This would be parentheses, exponent, multiplication, and division, or it could be d division, multiplication. They're the same. It doesn't matter in terms of how powerful they are. When I do something to the coefficient or the number in front of the variable term, uh, whatever I do, it's almost like the exponents on the variables are so much better that it, they can't be reached by that first wave operation. And it's the second wave that has to reach them. It's like you have to soften them up with an attempt to multiply and, the, you know, whatever else the best you can do, whatever's less than that. So when I do 5 times 1 here, I'm multiplying the coefficients. But that doesn't work with the exponents. So my x to the first power and x to the third power, I don't do 3 times 1 because it's not powerful enough to do the multiply. The best I can hope for is that I can add them together. So when I multiply the numbers, I always add the exponents. So when I do this, I get 5, and then 3 plus 1, and then y, 2 plus 4. Now I'm not going to do them all out like this, I just wanted to have 1 there for a reference point. So really what it becomes is 5x to the 4th, y to the 6th. Now. I'm going to do this multiplication, negative 5, and then 1 plus 2 is x to the third, 2 plus 1 is y to the third. See how it's easy to lose uh, if you don't put the 1's there? It's really easy to get x squared, y squared here, and it would be wrong. It's probably also one of the answer choices, just so you know. And then um, 5 times negative 1, and then 1 plus 4, and 2 plus 3. So you end up getting a final answer of D for number 54. If you notice, uh, like C for instance, C assumes basically that you forgot to put that you forgot there's a one on your x in the first term, and then the middle term of your little trinomial thing that you have going on there, there's the uh, you don't have a one on the y either. So be very careful. They're trying to trick you into getting the wrong answer, even though you're smart enough to get the correct one. What can you do if none of this makes any sense? Number one, talk to your teacher. That's what you should be doing. On the other side of it, if you get to test day and you're one of those test anxiety folks, I know you guys exist, um, here's what you can do. The x and the y values, if you lock them in, can give you some way to get an answer here. It's not a good method. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Anyway, you hit the x and make sure it's not zero. Mine's a fourth, so I'm going to change it to negative 10 and 10. I'm going to go into the window, and whatever I want x to be, I just change the x values right there to the positive and negative versions. Then I want to go in and graph something uh, that's linear. So 2x plus 5 is pretty good. Once I graph it, the calculator just sort of remembers what it made, what it used for its x value to draw that graph, so it just stores it for you. Um, and then 2x, or 2 times 10 plus 5, that 2x plus 5 thing, is actually 25. And I found out a few days ago that the y value locked itself into that number 2. Now, what can I do with that information? I can type in the question exactly like it is in the problem and use it to my advantage. Like I said, it's not a, I'm not proud that this works. It just does. The biggest thing about this problem is make sure that you click out when you put an exponent. Like if you keep writing right here and don't click over, it takes you forever to realize that you've done it, and then you have to start all over. It's the most annoyingly frustrating thing ever. And I can't say this enough how not good I feel about the fact that this works, but it does, so, you know, people have to graduate high school, even if they hate math. So I want to click out and close it. So my goal is to make sure it looks as much like it as possible. x to the third, y to the fourth, 
x to the fourth, y to the third, x to the second, y. It's got two minuses. And then I want to go back and just make sure that first thing is 5x y to the second, and it is. And I'm going to write that number down. 7.324 times 10 to the 12. I said the answer was D. What I'm going to do is just type in that answer. See where I forgot to click over? I doomed myself. Don't fall for that trick. Minus 5, x to the fifth. Sorry it takes so long to type this in. It's really hard to do it on a computer. So you'll see it looks exactly like it. If it's the right answer, it should give me the same exact answer. And it does. I've done this method on some of the other videos too. Um, so if you want to see that it works in the sense that these answers don't give you that answer, you're welcome to go look at them. But I don't want to bore you with it again. So there it is. It's just a method to use if you can't do it. It's not that difficult to learn to do this. Talk to your teacher or you know find somebody who can help you do it you know, more appropriately if you're having trouble with it because you're going to need it as you transfer up in the mass scale. And you know it's not that hard to learn. It just may have been confusing in the beginning. So good luck.